I've been hanging on to this reel of eight millimeter motion picture film for 46 years. But a couple of weeks ago, I also got a box full of even older regular eight millimeter and super eight millimeter reels from my parents. A lot of it was shot by my father and my grandmother in the 1960s. So I decided it was time to do something with all of it. There are a few reasons that the time was right. A big family reunion is coming up in a couple of months and I want to share some of this old footage with my cousins and aunts and uncles. Plus I'm curious to see some of the films my dad shot from before I was born and me as a little kid of course. But mostly it's because I wanted to see what is on this particular reel. What do you think's on it? You have one guess. If you said skateboarding, you're right. This is me at age 15. My little film was shot with this eight millimeter motion picture camera. We had many family movie nights when I was a kid. And of course, when I visited my grandparents, these were often part of the nightly entertainment. Now this movie projector is broken now. So having these memories digitized has become a huge goal. I did a bit of research on film scanning service companies, but I have about 4,000 feet of film and realized it would be costly. I also didn't want to let this film out of my sight. I couldn't risk it becoming damaged or lost. Plus I'm a hands-on DIY type. You know that, right? Enter the Kodak Reels 8mm and Super 8 movie film scanner. I can't even remember how I came across it. Now this is a consumer grade film scanner. It's basically fully automatic, but super easy to operate. I just followed the instructions in the owner's manual. Of course you did Marlene. Here are some of the controls of the scanner. Um, it's very easy to use. You can adjust picture. You can adjust the frame, exposure, sharpness, tint, and I just added a one point in the sharpness, but I left the exposure and everything else at the defaults for these tests that I did. And when you're ready, you load the film in. And that's actually the trickiest part. And when you're done scanning, you can upload via USB and there's a cord you can plug into the back of the machine, or you can use an SD card and plunk that into your computer. Super simple. Now there are issues with white balance and I noticed that the color jumped around a bit from frame to frame in the same scene. But honestly, how many times do we add filters to our clips to fake this look? Keep in mind the area of each movie frame is smaller than most digital camera sensors and probably your cell phone too. So when you scan it and enlarge it, it's going to be soft, but that just adds to the charm. So you take this tiny little film and you scan it and you actually get a file dimension of 1728 by 1296 pixels. So that's the, the frame size. So um, not as big as 4K, but bigger than 1080p. Now, of course, your original is quite small and you are enlarging all that grain and things like that. But that, you know, adds to the kind of unique quality of scanning your old eight mil films. And it's something that uh, I really like about it. It brings back, you know, the nostalgia of the format. And when I've edited these films, so I scan them and then sort of cut out all the junk, um, I edited at the native size so that I didn't shrink it or enlarge it. So when it does play back, it will be at the native size of 1728 by 1296 pixels, which is quite large. Here are the full specs of this scanner. And the main one I'm paying attention to here is the frame rate. You can see here that the, once you get your MP4 video, the frame rate of that video is 20 frames per second. Now, typically eight mil film was captured at between 16 and 18 frames per second. And when we edit film, we usually edit it at 24 frames per second or 30 or 60. So we have to come to a compromise and my compromise is editing at 24 frames per second. This doesn't change the look of the film too much. 
I mean, it might look choppy anyway because your original was captured at a slower frame rate. It was captured at 16 or 18 frames per second. So if you see a little bit of that choppiness, that's why. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about this. I'm not making Hollywood movies here. I'm just scanning family memories and everyone's just happy to get an image at all and not too worried about frame rate right now. So you're probably wondering how long does it take to scan film? Well, a three minute film, which is the standard 50 foot roll of uh, eight millimeter that I was using, took about a half an hour to scan. So yeah, it's a time consuming process. So keep that in mind. If you have a deadline, you might want to get started as soon as possible. Now you can leave the scanner unattended for short periods of time, but I would stay kind of close because what can happen is sometimes the old films, the, if there's any splices in it, uh, they can separate and then it just kind of sits there and spins around. Another thing that can happen is the film won't wind up properly on the take up reel. Now that never happened to me. But what did happen is I did get these little jams. Now, the good thing is when it jams, it kind of just stops, but it will not ruin your film. It will not tear the sprockets out of the sides of your film, which is really good. So if you do walk away and stuff happens, uh, when you come back, you know, nothing will be broken. However, I would tend to stick around the house. I mean, sure, go off and make yourself a coffee or lunch. And, you know, maybe listen to some podcasts or watch YouTube videos while all this scanning is going on. And of course, you have to build in a little bit of time for rewinding. And I found that with the rewinding, that's when the film did not wind properly on the take up reel. So I found the most problems with the rewinding. So you definitely do not want to leave the room when you're doing that. Now I bought this film digitized directly from the Kodak website. I'll drop the link below. It was actually cheaper for me in Canada to buy from there instead of Amazon. And even though it came from New Jersey, the shipping only cost $6 and there was no customs or duty to pay when the courier arrived at the door. I love this scanner and this is the most fun I've had in ages. And I have to say, this is the most fun video for YouTube that I've made in forever. If you think this video was a lot of fun, give it a thumbs up. Now I'm sure there are better options out there for eight millimeter film scanning. You can get it done professionally or you can get higher end scanners, but this is good enough for my current purposes. I'll let the next generation figure something else out.